let's do this. So um, I think uh, last time, um, let's see, so maybe I should just, you know, I can bring up the slides. Okay, here we are on the slides. Okay, so last time we we're kind of going through some stuff. We, uh, we basically used that free entry condition, uh, plugged in for what we knew about um, uh, firm profits and firm value and the wage. You know, it's really about, um, it's really about sort of congruency between wages and profits that's going to result in this, this equilibrium here. Okay, so we, we plugged in for all that stuff um, in a process similar to this, okay? And we did it, you know, sort of the, the official way. We, we allowed for the possibility that uh, uh, R was changing over time or that the equilibrium itself was changing over time, and we got this differential equation, which we decided only had one sort of reasonable starting point. Okay, so that instability induced uniqueness in the outcome and the outcome occurred immediately. Okay, so, um, yeah, so, uh, and then this, I fixed this, there was that typo in the notes that I think Dan uh, very nicely pointed out. Uh, so uh, that's fixed now. So now, you know, higher discount rate, lower research makes sense. Okay, so, um, all right, so then, so that was our, okay, and I think, I think, I think that's pretty much where we stopped. So then the, the only thing to do at that point, okay, is kind of work. So we, we found sort of the fundamental variable of equilibrium, research fraction, R, uh, and then we just work back up um, the chain to get stuff, other stuff that we might be interested in. Okay, so for instance, um, so here, this is R, okay, uh, and we might be interested in the growth rate of the number of varieties itself and we know that um you know the uh we can, we can get to the growth rate from r just by multiplying by gamma right so um uh let's see so the the let's fire up the whiteboard here so we found um one second we found R, okay, so that's not good. That's not a real R. Okay, you, you know, there's always a warm-up period. Okay, so we found R was, uh, let me pull this up. Okay, um, I think we, I don't know if, if we had it exactly in this, this particular form, but, you know, something equivalent to this uh, rho over gamma, and that's all over epsilon. Okay, so we found that was sort of like the solution to our, equation uh, characterizing R, okay, or the unique starting point, okay? So, um, all right, and so then we know, uh, remember our law of motion for N, right, was that the number of new products is gonna be equal to gamma times N times R, okay? Which means that the growth rate is gonna be equal, you know, the growth rate of N, turned out over N, is gonna be gamma R, okay? so the the growth rate equation is just, it's fairly simple. You put in a certain amount of research and you researchers and you literally get out growth, okay? And that's because of that assumption we made about sort of the, the what we would call phi and the Jones taxonomy was one, okay? That makes things really simple. Okay, so then here we just get G equals gamma R, which is then gamma minus epsilon minus one rho over epsilon, okay? So, um, so yeah, so then we that sort of we can just start start working backwards once we do that. Okay, so then that's the growth rate of n. Okay, um, we may want to also know the growth rate of you know, n is a, is a more abstract object. Okay, we kind of want to know like what's the growth rate of, of output. Okay, so um, let's see where's our output expression. So so you know anytime we want to map back up through the chain from our sort of fundamental objects, especially in terms of growth rates. Okay. We can, you know, if we just know the, the expression for uh, C here is output, remember, is n to the one over epsilon minus one times P. Okay, so that's our that's our expression for total output in, in sort of the most simplified form, which is just saying, okay, you got some production labor going in linearly that's augmented by technology. And in this case, the way exactly in which technology goes in is through you know, n to the epsilon, one over epsilon minus one. Okay, so then, you know, in our equilibrium, the labor allocation isn't changing. Okay, so then GC is it just equal to one over 
epsilon minus one. So this is the rule of growth, the, the power rule of growth rates, okay, times G. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's not super illuminating to write it out, but just to say we did, you can write it out like this. Okay, so that's your growth rate of uh, consumption. Um, and then you can get all sorts of stuff. You could back out, you know, if you want to find the interest rate, you could use the Euler equation, um, you know, R equals uh, rho plus G, C. Okay, so you just basically add in a row here to get to R and stuff like that. So f at this point, then you can you can back out all sorts of stuff. Okay, so I don't know if um, you could find P, one minus R, we know how to do that, right? So um, you, you can find pretty much uh, whatever you want at that point, okay? So then, um, uh, yeah, so, so I guess, um, at this point, we're, we're pretty much done with the equilibrium. Okay, we see, we've seen what the outcome is. Okay, uh, we can calculate um, the, we assume, we, yeah, so, so this is, so remember we, uh, okay, two questions. Um, is P constant? Yeah, so, so remember we, we had that, that equation, um, you know, R dot was equal to some stuff. It's sort of like one minus R, R minus R star. Right, so we had that and you know some stuff in here. So and that that was that quadratic form, okay? And then we we figured out that you know unless you start in the exact right place at r star, then things kind of go off the rails, okay? So you, so essentially this means that we're going to start at r equals r star, and so then that means and then remember p is just one minus r, so p is just the the remaining uh, labor fraction. So so you know it, it, we we've proven basically that that r is constant, so therefore p is also constant. Uh, as well, just from the get-go, okay? Um, if, you know, it, it could be in other cases that P wasn't constant, in which case you'd have, you know, GC is this term plus the growth rate of P, and then you, if you knew that, you could factor it in. So it's, it wouldn't be a problem, but in this case, it just happens that P is not moving around over time, okay? Um, another question, uh, let's rearrange my windows here. So another question is, can you repeat how we get the interest rate? Okay, so, um, so the interest rate is, we're, we're assuming in the background uh, here, sort of standard uh, Ramsey style of consumers, okay, with law, with in this case, we're just doing log utility just for the hell of it. Okay, so uh, we're gonna get R is equal to rho plus GC, okay? Um, and so then here we would just, you know, uh, I don't know if would it, it might simplify. Yeah, actually, yeah, so I mean, it, maybe, it does kind of simplify, so maybe there's something to be learned there. I don't know. I haven't done it. Uh, got it. Okay. So, yeah. So, if, but if you if you do add in rho, um, I think it would cancel this epsilon, so you'd get like gamma minus rho over. I think this would be gamma minus rho over something like that. Okay. So I mean, it's a little bit simpler. Um, uh, I don't know exactly how to interpret it, but um, you you can get it. Okay. So uh, all right. So then. Okay, so there's kind of two things we can do. We're, we're going to step into thinking about efficiency now, basically, in welfare. Okay, so we've, we've come up with the outcome. Uh, we have this situation where, um, you know, basically we have expanding, these expanding varieties, and uh, they, uh, they, by expanding varieties, at least to grow. So essentially, like, we've got a fixed amount of labor, basically P uh, in equilibrium. Uh, devoted to production, okay, and it's being spread out over more and more varieties, okay. So then, it's not obvious ex ante how that's going to play out because you're you're thinning out your resources over more and more varieties. So maybe that's bad because you're putting less and less in each one, but there's more of them. And kind of the way that this aggregation works, okay, is that that actually leads to growth. Is that is that people like variety enough that it's it's okay that you're putting less and less in each one. You're just kind of differentiating, okay. Um, and then if you think about like uh, sort of what what what's going on with uh, with epsilon, okay, um, with so so uh, let's see. So our let me remind you of the uh, the aggregation, okay, is I just want to make sure I get the exponents right. So I'm referring to the notes. Uh, you know, epsilon is controlling how we aggregate these this way and so kind of the two extremes are well one extreme is epsilon equals infinity okay and in that case these exponents both become one okay or just large epsilon uh 
And that means that it's a linear aggregation. They're basically perfect substitutes, all these goods. And if you look here, um, up here for the C expression, okay, uh, if epsilon goes to infinity, then this goes, this exponent goes to zero. Okay, so there's not much effect. Okay, so that's saying that like, if they're all perfect substitutes, you know, variety isn't that important. Okay, and so the, the, the fact that you're spreading it, you know, you're just spreading out over linear substitutes, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't make a difference. Where did the C expression come from? So yeah, um, that's actually not uh, so bad. Actually, we can, um, so remember that, uh, we, we can get that actually, there's, there's like a neat little derivation you can do. So each, it comes from symmetry, okay? So so essentially, um, we know that the, the outcome uh, at the, the product level is gonna be the same, okay? Because uh, essentially the production function here is just uh, how much you're producing, CI, is how much labor you put in, okay? And how much labor you put in, given all this symmetry, it's just gonna be the total amount of labor divided by N. You're splitting it evenly amongst all the product lines, okay? So um, so once you, once you have symmetry, then you kind of know CI, all right? And then if you plug that into here, into this C equation, well, you're gonna get C equals what? Um, so you're gonna get, uh, Let's write it up. Integral from zero to n. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you're, you're gonna well, you're, you're gonna get p over n to the. Let me let me. I don't I don't want to write all of the steps. Okay, but but you'll, you 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 can see what will happen. Basically, is that the p all right over n is gonna factor out. So anytime you run a constant through here, you're gonna get that constant factoring out, and that doesn't depend on i, so that's fine. The only thing we're gonna pick up inside is an n raised to this power because there are still n of those product lines so we're basically integrating one over zero to n which gives you n inside here and then to raise to that power epsilon over epsilon minus one and then what we're left with is well the p is fine combining these two this exponent minus one you can see will give you one over epsilon minus one so it's just using symmetry and then and then working out exactly how splitting uh, the, the product lines, the labor across product lines, but doing more and more product lines eventually gets you this. Okay, and so essentially this term is more powerful than this one over n term a little bit, and so that that power gets you net growth in, in terms of uh, output. Okay. Um, all right. So then, right. So so it, but yeah. So thinking about the intuition is that it that that logic you know doesn't. It's not that important if they're linear substitutes because you're just reshuffling things and it's all linear, okay? Um, as they get more and more towards uh, the, to sort of basically, when, when the other extreme all point here is when epsilon goes to one because things appear to break down, it turns out that it converges to a sort of log-log aggregation, right? So when epsilon, uh, right, the same. So, um, you know, we've seen, we've seen in various settings when you have that, dynamic, you, you converge to sort of a Cobb-Douglas log-log aggregation. So it would be like the, the limit when epsilon goes to one would be this, okay. Now, equation for I correct. Uh, might not be, let me think. So we're adding in rho, okay? So then on top, we're gonna get rho times epsilon, times epsilon minus one. So yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I did the math wrong there, I think. Um, so what would that actually be? It would be epsilon minus one squared. Yeah. Let, let's let's uh let's give that the old college try once more. All right. So we will you know fraction surgery here. Okay, um so we're gonna get well let's just let's not let's not cut corners. Okay. We're gonna if we if we combine the fraction, we're gonna get uh epsilon epsilon minus one times rho. Okay, that's a row. Uh, and so then, yeah, yep, it's the squared. So then you get epsilon minus one squared row over epsilon over epsilon minus one. Okay, yeah, but I think that's, yeah, that's right. Uh, thank you, keeping me on my toes here. Um, so I think, and then, um, yeah, so so that's the equation. I don't it's, I don't know how to interpret that, the squared. I haven't seen that one before, but no, that's correct, I think. Um, 
yeah, so you still get, we, we know that Epsilon is, we're always assuming Epsilon greater than one, so it's not like there's going to be, you know, non, uh, non-monotonicity there, but it'll just be a little bit of a different shape, but yeah. Okay, so, um, all right, so going back here, so with Eps the other extreme is Epsilon equals one, okay? That's where you get this log log aggregation. So we know that as you go to Epsilon one, it's Epsilon equals one, things kind of blow up in a bunch of different places. The price markup goes to infinity, profits go to infinity, things go haywire. So we can't truly reach epsilon equals one. Um, I guess, you know, here, if you look at R, R would explode. Uh, G would explode. Uh, GC would explode. G itself would not explode. G itself would be just gamma. And what does that mean? When G equals gamma, over here, if G is equal to gamma, that means that R equals one. Okay, so as epsilon goes to one, R, or you could look at here, as epsilon goes to one, R goes to one because profits explode. People are just going nuts trying to do research and they completely forget about actually producing things. Um, and so that's a little bit weird. Um, so so that's the other extreme. But if you if you think about, okay, let's not go all the way to epsilon equals one, let's just start down that road this um, exponent's gonna get bigger and bigger. Okay, so the, the, the basically epsilon, as you go towards epsilon equals one variety gets more important, the goods get less substitutable, which is why you see these huge markups because p for the firms are exploiting that lack of substitution, increases their monopoly power. Um, but it also means that the, the love of variety goes up. And so then um, that, that kick from epsilon goes up uh, as, you close, as you approach one. Okay, so that's that's the intuition for sort of like substitutability, love for variety, and all that. They're really two different sides of the same coin, right? Um, okay, so so that's that's good. Um, we can uh, so, so there's kind of two different things we're gonna do um, relating to welfare. Okay, so uh, let's I'm kind of being free form here, so let's at least write something. Like a word, at least. Got to write some words sometimes. Um, let's let's think about welfare. Okay, so we're going to think about welfare in terms of calculating the welfare in the, the social planner. Uh, derivation of the second line. Okay, where are we talking, uh, Dor? Okay, for for the interest rate. So it goes uh, uh, This this one. Okay. Um, so, okay, so this is, this, so here's what we're saying. This is our aggregator, okay? Um, our, our production is linear, right? So this is, the, this is just restating our production function, saying that whatever labor you put in is the amount of production you, you make for good I, okay? We went through the whole um, firm problem and, and figured out basically all the firms are symmetric. They have no features. They're going to produce this. They're going to use the same amount of labor and produce the same amount of output. Uh, so th these are going to be equal across I. So, so what, you know, what that means is, you know, P, in other words, another way they say it is P is equal to N times LI. So you put in LI to each good, there's N goods, and then that produce, that's going to account for all your production labor. And so that means if you invert this, that's, you know, that LI or CI is equal to P over N. You're just splitting them evenly. Okay. Um, all right, Priyama, I'll get to that question in a second. Um, so we know just from symmetry, this is this here. Uh, so th this here is this is CI, right? That's going to be P over N. So when we plug in P over N here, okay. So the P over N doesn't depend on I. That's going to come out here, okay. We're just going to be able to factor that out. So that's why that I factored that out here. But when we factor that, we still do have a one here, basically, okay. And because we have a one here, so one to this power is still just one. We're integrating one from zero to N. So then what ends up inside is just like N. Okay, so we have CI over, out here, we have N inside, and that, that ex exponent here still applies to the dead so that's why we get N to the epsilon over epsilon minus one. So it's just sort of, anytime you, you plug back into these aggregating functions, you always have to be careful that you might pick up a power of N. That's a, that's a common sort of error that people make is they forget, they factor out, and they're like, okay, that's integrate, it's just one, right? So then then you can do the net, net uh, N effect. Okay, so the Priyama's question is, uh, if goods are less substitutes, I mean, a variety is more valuable. My kind of epsilon, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so if, uh, if yeah. So the the intuition is they go in kind of opposite directions, it, or yeah, they're more. Let me make sure I get this right. Uh, 
if the goods are less substitutable, let's say, okay, which would be going towards uh, epsilon equals one, okay, um, then variety is more important because um, I guess maybe it's easy to say they, they're in the reverse, which is if they're if they're more substitutable, variety isn't that important because it doesn't matter which good you have. You know, you, they they look, they're just you know ten different types of toothpaste. They all look the same. They have weird you know, effervescent peppermint names, and you're just like, I'll take any one, okay? Uh, so having 20 different types of toothpaste doesn't really matter, it doesn't make you better off, okay? So so that that substitutability and love of variety are are, are, are closely linked like that. Um, and then that that shows up in, in these expressions for kind of the growth rate overall, okay? Um, all right, so, okay, so let's, let's talk about welfare, all right? Um, we can we can calculate we can do a social planner problem. We can calculate uh, the welfare in equilibrium. Okay, we can compare those and and so on. Uh, but if if we want to think about welfare in this setting, so like we can think about utility. I mean, welfare in this case is just utility because we have like a representative household commune sort of setup. Okay, so if we wanted to think about um, utility, uh, so zero to infinity. Okay, so. We don't have population growth here, so we're, our discount rate is just going to be n. Okay, so I mean, it's it's really you know it's just c of t e to the minus rho t t t. Okay, so that's that's our utility function. That's that's pretty. Uh, no, of course, we have u of c of t. We're not just doing linear utility. Uh, u of c of t discounted appropriately, okay? Um, we've been assuming from the Euler equation implicitly, we are assuming log utility, okay? So we can do that, all right? Log utility, and then we know, uh, we know what C of, we know what CT is, right? So this this is in, pretty much, it's just P times N to the one over epsilon minus one, okay? So I'll write it out formally like this, epsilon minus one. Log, okay, and then e to the minus rho t dt, okay? So that's the full statement of, of utility, okay? Um, now, we can uh, we can split that up, right? So first of all, we know that, we know a couple things. One thing we know is, well, p is going to be constant just from the get-go, but that's what we found in the equilibrium, and then n is going to be growing at constant rate uh, g given by that expression up there. We also know that this logarithm we could split up because linearity uh, integrals are linear. We could split that whole thing up into two different uh, integrals if we want. Okay, and that's going to be uh, useful. Okay. Um, okay. So then let's see. Yeah. So um, let's split. Let's split up the integral. So first we have the integral log of p. So so I'm just going to write log of p because we know it's constant. It's just that expression that we got and, we're, and we could just leave it at that okay so we have like a this is this is like your level term this is saying what's the the baseline level coming from production in this logarithmic setting right and then we have the growth related term which is this here so um let's 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 um let's be smart here okay so uh we're gonna have log of nt to the one over epsilon minus one. So we can we can actually factor that out up front and then just have a log of n, n of t. Okay. Okay, so so you know we have log of n of t to the one over epsilon minus one. Because it's a log, we can bring that out here and we're just gonna have the integral of log of, of t. Okay. So now we have kind of things that we, we basically can deal with. Okay, the first one we know how to do. Um, that's that's just. I mean, that that, that we can just use a, a simple rule for integration. Okay, so so for this one, we know that if you integrate uh, a constant uh, term in the integrand with a, a constant discount rate, you're just you just divide. Okay, so we're gonna get log of p uh, to one over row over row. Okay, so that's a p on top and then a row on the bottom okay so anytime you have a constant stream uh, of whatever income or whatever uh, and you you uh, integrate that you just divide okay so if it was profits with interest rate r it'd be pi over r we see that before 
So we're, we're assuming P and I are constant. So yeah, this is saying what we're doing here is we're saying we found the equilibrium. Let's find out what the utility slash welfare is. And since the equilibrium uh, are in, the, in equilibrium, those P and R are constant, then we're going to we're going to go with that. So P this now this P instead of P of T, I mean, it is P of T, but it's really whatever we found. Sorry, you know, it's like one minus this thing. OK, so it's whatever we found. I'm not going to plug it in because it would just get too messy, but it's whatever we found in the equilibrium up top. OK. Um, <clears throat> OK, so then so now we have to deal with this other term. OK, uh, this one's a little bit trickier, but it's not too bad. OK, um, so let's see. Let's make sure I get this right. Zero infinity. So here we need to know a, a little bit about what n is. Okay. So what is n of t? That is n that we know is growing at rate g. Okay. Where g is another expression that we know quite well up top. That that's a function of parameters in equilibrium and is is constant. Okay. Um, we can assume that n starts at at value one. That's a safe assumption because there's no obvious scale or units to n. And so it's just going to be something that grows exponentially at rate gt, OK? Um, so that n is going to look like this, basically. And, and therefore, log of n of t is going to be just a linear function, OK? So that n is growing exponentially. Its logarithm is a linear function, OK, um, that we've seen, unfortunately, in the news, too. Uh, so if you um, plug that in here, then you're going to get gt e to the minus rho t. Okay, and so g t, actual literal t, times just this discount rate uh, dt. Okay, technically, I guess I should have these dt's here, right? Um, okay, so that's what we're going to get. So now we're, we're almost there. We just need to know what's the integral of, we know the integral of e to the minus rho t is just 1 over rho. Okay, um, it turns out the integral of, <clears throat> turns out the integral of, t times e to the minus rho t. So now we're integrating a linear function with a, a discount rate. Turns out that that's just 1 over rho squared. OK, it's not too bad. Um, you can see that using the only method that we ever use to solve integrals, basically integration by parts, right? Imagine you integrate this by parts. The uv term is going to be 0, it turns out. Um, but if you integrate this by parts, knock this one down from t to 1. So to take a derivative from t to 1. Integrate this up. That's going to give you another. It's going to give you the same thing, but divided, basically divided by rho. OK. The signs, you know, you, the, the signs have to cancel out in the right way, but believe me, they do. So you're basically, when you, when you, when you throw on one of these, you just, you just throw on another factor of rho. And in fact, you can see that that, you know, that integration by parts trick works. It keeps working. So if you, if you want to do t squared, you just get one over rho cubed. So the general form also you can derive like that too. You could even do a nifty proof by induction if you want. I'm not gonna, but you could. Um, okay, so then here we're gonna get log of p over rho. This nothing's happening there. Here and then uh, so g. Let's factor out that g. So minus one, and then this is gonna give us. Um, this integral is just going to give us a 1 over rho squared contribution. Um, yeah, and you can factor out the rho if you want. So the both of these have a common term of rho. Why not? Log of p plus. So uh, yeah, I don't know how to write this. g over rho over epsilon minus 1. OK. So um, yeah, so this is this is what you get for. Uh, for utilities or welfare, whatever you want to call it, okay. And and the, here you can see, <clears throat> I've I've phrased it like uh, just I, I, the way I phrase it is that P and G are 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 two positive kind of goods in this setting, right? So it's good to have production that gives you kind of a level. It's good to have growth because that means that things are growing over time. Um, so they're they're both good things. They show up positively in this expression. Um, they're mediated by the discount rate rho. That makes sense, okay? Um, and, and and you can also see that this is this is GC, right? This is GC over rho. So it's it's really like log of p plus GC over rho. Okay, I think I've got a breakdown of handwriting. Log of p plus GC over rho is kind of what 
uh, is important there. Okay. Um, so uh, first integral. Uh, that's the the log of p integral, or the. Yep. Okay. Um, so th this one is. Uh, you know, where, uh, so, so let me think about it like this. Th this log of P is, is a constant. So that's actually, really, this is just the integral of, um, put it here. I'll do it up here. Uh, really, this is just, I'll do it up top here, is, is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus rho t dt. Okay, so let's, let's go over that. So that's going to be, um, uh, Right, so yeah, uh, P doesn't depend on T. So P, in, remember in equilibrium we found, you start, uh, uh, I'll get to your question, Priyama. Uh, in equilibrium we found you that you start at R star and you stay there forever, right? That means that you also start at, at P star, one minus R star right away and you stay there forever. So P, P is actually gonna be constant right from time zero. Okay, so that's the nature of this equilibrium. Um, okay, so how is it GC? So GC, uh, yep. So remember GC, uh, let me just backtrack a little bit here. We found GC is one over epsilon minus one times G because that's the exponent that mediates N in consumption, okay? Um, so then if we go down here, pop down here, this part right here, this G over epsilon minus, epsilon minus one, this is actually GC here, right? So then this is just log of P plus, that's GC uh, over rho, okay? Um, that's that's just like intuition for thinking about okay we're trading off production and, and consumption growth uh, and rho rho is is that weight that lets that that goes into utility that lets you decide between those two and 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 actually that's a good segue because we can do page here um, continuous mode no oh I did new page above let's not do that I want new page below okay. Um, so yeah, so, so these two things, you know, production and growth are, are good things, but they're also, they're in, there's a trade-off between them because P is equal to one minus R and G is equal to, uh, let's try that again. Uh, G is equal to gamma R. Okay. So, you know, higher R means more growth, but less production. Okay. You could even, if you want, let's jump to the next page here. You could write it in terms of. And let's even let's even be clever and say okay this is row u that shows up in game theory sometimes too. Um, this is going to be row u is going to be log of one minus r plus uh, essentially like um, one over epsilon minus one times gamma r over rho. Okay, so you can write it purely in terms of r. Okay. Um, like this, so the, I'm writing row u, the rho is being a parameter constant. You know, if we were to like maximize this, it wouldn't affect anything. So that's why I'm, I'm free to move it over. Uh, R is something that's that's a sort of a choice. So um, you could write it like this and you could even say, okay, well, this is like u, u of R. Okay, so we're like the utility associated with choosing a particular R would be exactly this. Okay, so um, so that's kind of cool because then you can, you can just say, okay, we could we could plug in R here. It's not going to look pretty, okay, uh, uh, and find utility. But we could also even maximize this over R if we wanted, right? So we could say, um, suppose we chose R, and basically that would imply a certain level of production, a certain level of growth, and that would be reflected here. And we could we could find some optimum R, okay? So this is this is kind of the social planner, okay? So what we're doing is uh, uh, it's important to understand exactly what we're doing here is we're taking all that product market stuff as given, right? We're choosing R and then we're letting all the equilibrium product market stuff play out. So there's still monopolists, which could in principle be inefficient, right? Uh, and all of that, we're just saying, okay, we're going to be the social planner a little bit and choose R and then let everything happen in equilibrium after that, okay? Um, in addition, we're choosing R to be constant, right? So, so this, this, this is sort of the social planner where you choose R that's constant, and then you let everything play out in equilibrium, and you see what, what is your, uh, 
welfare. Okay. Um, and then you, you know, you could say, okay, well, what if we wanted to choose the maximum? So you get minus one over one minus R plus, uh, gamma over rho over epsilon minus one. Okay. Um, equally zero over here. Okay. So then, um, That means that one over one minus r is gamma over rho epsilon minus one. Pop over here. Uh, that means that one minus r is one. Okay, is one over that whole thing. Yeah, I mean it's is uh, epsilon minus one times rho over gamma. So you can see it kind of starting to look like our old expression for r, and then r. I don't know hat or something, some other R is going to be one minus that. So one minus. Okay. So that's going to be R hat. So that's saying if we maximize over R in this type of welfare calculation, what would we choose? Okay. So this is, uh, let me just double check. I believe that's what, yeah. yeah so that's actually, we're going to do the social planner. And that's um, that's exactly what we get. All right, that's a, you, you can see in the notes. That's that's exactly what we find in the social planner. Okay, so but it's important to understand that this isn't. We haven't quite shown that that's the optimum. Okay, it is the optimum. But we haven't proven it because we've assumed. This is like assuming constant r. This is like before we say we could assume constant r, or we could really go through and prove it. Okay, so it, it turns out because the social planner also chooses constant r then this gives you the same answer. But in general, it's not safe to just do this and, and say that we're done, mission accomplished. Okay, so um, there's, for the, this, the the constant R thing, it might be that um, in the notes is the utility function CRA. You know, the, the theta might've shown up, and I might, I, at some point I went through and, and decided we're just doing log. There, Yeah, there is that one theta. Um, and then I say, okay, well, utility is log. So so. More or less, it's log. Okay, uh, th that theta is a little bit of a, a, a red herring, I think. Um, yeah. So yeah, every I, I kind of do it generally, and then later on say that it's log. Okay, but but it, you could pretty easily extend it to to truly be CRA too. Um, so uh, yeah, so um, you know, it could be that the equilibrium you find constant R, but then the social planner would choose something different. Okay, that's that's a possibility in general. Um, but in this case, it just happens that they agree. Okay, so that's one thing is the constancy we have assumed. The other thing is that, that we also just sort of took the product market outcome as given, okay? Um, it, it, it is sometimes the case in these classes of models that the, the even the product market outcome is different between the equilibrium and the social, social planner, okay? Because they're monopolists. I mean, it's clearly that there's, there's some potential for uh, inefficiency here, okay? So it, tur it turns out... Um, in our case, uh, that's not going to be true. All right, so um, <clears throat> yeah, and and the reason it's not going to be true is it is, is that the symmetry is still that the symmetry argument still basically holds for the social planner. Okay, because think think about um, and this now we're going to start thinking. By the way, about truly the the true social planner here. Uh, rather than just sort of the, the, the shortcut social planner that we just did. Uh, so now it's FOC along with the growth rate of mu. So what, what I did, um, okay, so for, for Piyaman's question, um, what, what is it the max R hat? So R hat, it turns out that R hat is socially optimal. Okay, it, we took kind of a shortcut and assumed constant R, assumed all the product market stuff. Okay, um, and found that, and because those assumptions happened to be right, then R hat was was also right. Okay, the 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 truly official right way to do it is with Hamiltonian optimization, doing the full dynamic optimization, and then finding that, and there we do find R to be the same. Okay, and then. Um, uh, we have another question. Why is r hat r times epsilon is intuition? 
Oh yeah. Uh, okay, so that yeah. Um, let's kind of let me hold off on that. Okay, because that that's getting into the question of why is the the equilibrium outcome inefficient? Okay, so we can see that's a good good observation is that this um, our hat uh, is equal. Let me make sure our hat is is r times epsilon. Okay, so r which is greater than r. Right, because epsilon is greater than one. So r hat is greater than r. Uh, let's call this r star. The equilibrium. So r star is the equilibrium. r hat is the social planner. Okay. So uh, the social planner allocates more uh, labor to, to research, um, which means that in equilibrium there's an underinvestment in in research. Okay. Um, and it's mediated by epsilon. Okay. That substitution. All right. So what one way to think about it is okay. If epsilon equals one. Okay. Where in the uh, this the the log log case where things actually go haywire. Well, actually, in that case, they both equal one, and that's why 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 they're equal. Okay, they both hit that maximum at one. Okay, and that's 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 a bit unusual. And then um, as epsilon gets, let's see, as epsilon gets larger and larger, the the distance between and even the ratio between uh, r hat and r. Okay, so if you want to think about it, it's like r hat over r star. Is equal to epsilon, right? So that ratio, as epsilon gets larger, that ratio goes up. Um, so, so essentially, I, I don't have a good intuition for the. I mean, I think it. So, so in terms of like, is is the equilibrium inefficient? Okay, uh, they're kind. They're kind of increasing returns here to n. So like. Um, so there's if you look at just like the uh, the the expression for C, I mean there's there's kind of increasing returns there for n. So so by adding another um, product line, okay, you you introduce another product to the to the scene, okay, but you also sort of increase the overall variety, okay, that people have available to them, um, and you don't necessarily internalize that as as a firm, okay. Uh, you don't internalize sort of your effect on the other people through this aggregation, okay? Um, and then, uh, so 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 it really is just this sort of like it's this sort of spillovers across product lines that produces that. Um, in terms of why, I don't have a good tuition for why why exactly the, the magnitude of epsilon goes in there. Um, it must have something to do with this, the level of substitution and and the love for variety. Uh, let me let me think about that, um, and I can, I'll, I'll try and get back to you. Um, or maybe maybe something will come to me when we're discussing discussing the social planner. Um, okay, well let's so let's go through the official social planner. Okay, um, what are we doing here? Okay, so this is this is going to be more kind of like stuff we were doing before the Hamiltonian optimization. Okay, um, and it's it's gonna look kind of like what we just did here. Okay, except we're gonna we're gonna not assume a constant r from the get go, and then and then see what happens. Okay, so the the building blocks are the same. Okay, that we had up there. Okay, so we know. Let me just I'll kind of rehash. What we had uh, we know um, that c is equal to n to the one of epsilon minus one times p, which is and the one over epsilon minus one times one minus r. We're gonna we're gonna characterize things in terms of choosing r. Okay, so that's why I'm plugging in for r. And then we know that g, the growth rate of n, is just gamma times r. Okay. So those are those are sort of our, our building blocks here, and then we can write down a Hamiltonian optimization just kind of knowing that because um, well, I guess I mean actually the the the, the true way we should write it down is that n is equal and dot is equal to gamma r n. Okay, so so the, the optimization we're going to set up is n is going to be our state variable, r is going to be our choice variable. This tells us <clears throat> how does our um, state variable move around as a function of our itself and the choice variable. And then this uh, tells us basically what is our consumption or output or utility as a function of our state and choice variable. Okay, so we know we know the flow utility. We know the the law of motion for the state. We know our discount rate, so we're basically all set. Okay, so um, let's write down that Hamiltonian. 
Um, so I guess in the notes, I mean, yeah. In, in the notes, I, I use you. Um, I'll just write log because we have log utility, so why not? So uh, what, what is this going to be? It's going to be the log of and the one over epsilon minus one. We always, yeah, we always assume epsilon minus one. Um, we, you know, once in this model, when we when we approach epsilon minus one, we approach r equals one, which is and and all sorts of things blow up. So we're we're always going to assume that epsilon is greater than one. Um, okay, so uh, that's our expression for utility. So just the log of c, basically plugging in for c, um, and then plus mu times the law of motion. So here the law of motion is literally just mu times gamma r n. Okay, so this is like much more um, linear than we usually use. Or it's a little bit different from like what we did for Ramsey, but it's it's you know we're just we're just using the same approach basically. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's work through it. So now what? How do we? How do we solve this? Okay, and then and then in the background, you know, our discount rate is 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 rho. Okay, so how do we solve this? Okay, so well, I guess. Um, I mean, I, the other thing you can do is we can simplify this too. This is only going to be true, obviously, in in the log case, but you know, this is going to be. We could break up that log. That log jam, so to speak. Uh, plus. My plus signs are getting weird. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So now we can see there's a sort of like separability, linear separability between kind of the technology component and the production basically component. Um, and this looks like that utility we saw earlier. Uh, so yeah, that's only going to be true in log, but we may as well do it. Um, so the sum of logs. So uh, let me think. What is it? You mean? Um, so they, like, like the, the, this. This is a utility function, right? This is this is just U of C. Um, the sum of utilities <clears throat> across people or across time. So for so for if it, if the answer is people, then you know, we need to have a representative consumer, okay? So yeah, we, we have a representative consumer, right? So we have a constant population. Remember, our, our utility is, this is our utility, U of C of T, E to the minus rho T. So there's no L of T term, we have constant population, and there's just one, yeah, there's one representative consumer, or there's a continuum of identical consumers that we assume get the same stuff, right? Yep. Okay. So, um, so then, yeah, we're just gonna get log of log of c here. Um, cool. So, uh, so now we can. So this is our, our Hamiltonian. We can use our existing approach, right? So we're gonna. What, our Hamiltonian conditions are gonna be h sub r is equal to zero, sort of like our first order condition. Our state evolution is gonna be rho mu minus mu dot is equal to h n. Okay. So those are our two. We're just taking like you know, now using R and N instead of C and A uh, or C and K, um, and then these are our two equations. Transversality, it's there. We're not gonna, we're not gonna deal with it right now. Okay. Um, all right. So let's let's work through it. So for H of R, what do we get? Uh, what do we get? Zero is equal to minus one over one minus R. For that first term, and then the second term, we get a plus mu gamma n, okay, which means you know one over one minus r is equal to mu gamma n. All right, so we'll leave it at that for now, and we, we're going to be able to simplify things more later. Okay, so but keep this keep this on in, on tap. Um, all right, and then the other one, uh, well, we can just write it in here. Uh, h sub n, okay, so that's going to be 1 over epsilon minus 1 times 1 over n, okay, plus that's the derivative of this term with respect to n. This one drops out, there's no n there, and this is going to be gamma 
Oops, mu gamma r. Okay, so that's another row mu minus mu dot. Okay, so um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, uh, so so now we have this. We we have these two, kind of two equations, and we need to simplify them just like we do with Ramsey. So usually, what we try and do is we try and get rid of mu. We, mu is 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 problematic, and we need to we need to take care of it. Um, and often that's easy because mu we 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 can can we can um, divide and get a growth rate, and that's what we do in Ramsey. Here it's a little bit of a tricky issue because we have um, this term which has no mu in it, and so we can't like divide to kill off that growth rate. Okay, um, but we can kind of sub in like here, so like. Basically, one over n is going to be proportional to the mu. If you look at this equation, if you move the n over one over n is going to be proportional to the mu. So we could plug that in here and make everything have a mu term, which is good. Okay, so let's do that. So this this um, <clears throat> is going to be what uh, one over epsilon minus one. So what is what is one over n going to be? We can get it from here. One over n is going to be mu gamma one minus r. Okay, so that's not so bad actually. Here we get mu gamma one minus r. Okay. Um, and then plus uh, mu gamma r. All right. Okay, so now at least things are proportional to, to mu. Okay. Um, Right. So, so now th you know this, the things get a little complicated for a bit, but at the end they, they kind of work out not so bad. Okay. So, so we have this equation here: rho mu minus mu dot is equal to something that's proportional to the mu. Okay. So if we divide by mu, we're going to get rho minus that growth rate of mu is equal to some stuff. So, so you can see that the, the gamma we can we can factor out. Should we we should factor out the gamma. So we're gonna factor out the gamma. The mu's we're gonna get those are getting killed off. Uh, so then we're left with one minus r over epsilon minus one. That's an epsilon there. Um, plus r. Okay. Um, right. So so here you know we. Basically, one over epsilon minus one, one minus r, and then here we have an r. Okay, so that's what's gonna could be left over there. Now, um, I think trying to decide should we should we simplify that more? Maybe not. No, maybe we should. I don't know. Um, so, so if you wanna, you can simplify this even more. If we write this as one over epsilon minus one, so this term here, and then uh, plus or minus, I guess. If, if you combine those two terms, you're gonna get this. So this isn't pretty, but if you can com combine those terms to, to combine these R terms, you get two minus epsilon, okay? Um, yeah, so, so that's what we have. So keep this equation here. All right, uh, handy. All right, so so that we're still taking basically the same approach that we took with Ramsey is that we have we've now isolated on the state side, the state variable side, a growth rate of mu. Over here, you know, in the first order condition equations, we can also take the growth rate of this, right, and uh, find out um, the growth rate of mu. So that does that simplify? Uh, so th this doesn't. So this doesn't. When you combine these two together, it actually does become this two minus epsilon thing. It's, it's like with with uh, firm profit, so you get that same exponent. It doesn't um, turn into like epsilon over epsilon minus one as you might might expect. Uh, yep. Okay. So um, all right. So let's now let's find mu dot over mu uh, from the first order condition. Okay, which is to say, take the take the growth rate of the first order condition. Okay. So let's let's take the growth rate of this here. Okay, so um, let's 
Um, we, we, or we can take the growth rate of this, I guess. Uh, so, or, you know, you could do it any number of ways, but at the end of the day, the first order condition is saying mu uh, gamma n one minus r is equal to one. Okay, that's that's, and so we can take the growth rate of this and just say the growth rate of mu plus the growth rate of n plus the growth rate of this thing gamma is not changing is equal to zero. Okay, so zero equals mu dot over mu. So this is like foc growth tells us zero equals mu dot over mu plus n dot over n. Now this one, I mean, this is kind of funky, but you're gonna get minus r dot over one minus r. So the derivative of that is minus r dot. The value is one minus r. Okay, so this is what we're gonna get. So this is what we do, what we get when we take that derivative. Um, okay, so then, yeah, and then you, you can, Solve like usually we end up solving for minus lambda. Uh, where is this one? This is coming from take that. So this is our FOC, right? This is FOC. We 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 take that derivative with respect to R, and we find some relationship between R, mu, and n, right? That's true at all time periods, right? This is like our our u, mu equals u prime of c from Ramsey. This is true at all time periods, and so you know the the one I'm I'm using directly is this, okay? So I'm just multiplying that one minus r over. So one is equal to mu gamma n one minus r. And we're taking the growth rate of this. So you say growth rate of this, the left-hand side is zero because it's constant. Then you just pick up the growth rate of mu, gamma is a constant, growth rate of n, and then the growth rate is one minus r term. Okay, so that's this here. Okay, and then we're solving this. We're just saying, okay, we'll move this mu dot over mu over here. So we're gonna get mu dot over mu is equal to um, what is it, n dot over n. So n dot over n, that's the growth rate of n. That's just, that's gamma times r, right? We know that's gamma times r. That's our, our production function for ideas. Okay, so we, we, you know, we want to remember there is this linkage here. Um, and then minus r dot over one minus r. Okay. All right. Um, okay, we're almost there. Uh, now what we have to do is take this here and plug it in there. And then things are gonna be slightly better. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So I wanna make sure I should I should probably shift shift my myself a little bit to the right so I don't draw underneath my own head. Um, okay, so combine those two. What do we get? So we're going to get rho, from, from up here, rho minus mu dot over mu, which we know is this here. So plus gamma r, make sure you get those signs right. r dot over 1 minus r is equal to, you know, I'm going to, we can see there's a gamma r here. I'm going to use this one. This, I'm going to say, I'm going to use this expression because yeah, I had I had a, I had a sort of an inkling that we didn't want to simplify things too much. Plus, okay, so this is gamma times this thing in here. Okay, now, all right. So th this ain't pretty, but um, we can work with it. Okay, and we can also see that at least we're going to get some canceling. This gamma r will cancel out that gamma r on the left on the right hand side. So rho minus rho minus r dot over one minus r times gamma one minus r over epsilon minus one. So all of a sudden that doesn't look so bad. Okay, I've seen, I've seen worse. Um, this is gonna be a quadratic form like we saw before, defining the evolution of r itself, r dot equals some quadratic form. And it's gonna give us basically the same logic, all right? Um, okay, so let's work through it. Uh, how should we do this? So we, we, we want to isolate r dot over r. So we want to isolate r dot itself. So let's see, r dot over one minus r is going to be equal to rho minus gamma times one minus r over epsilon minus one. 
okay? Um, and that means that r dot is equal to this, one minus r times rho. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a quadratic form, all right? Now, with, with, with this, it's, you kind of got to do the same thing. Um, I'm not being efficient here with, with like using my, my board space. Let's, let's do what I would do in an actual classroom and kind of make a divider here and go right. So, um, when you, when you get these kind of terms, you, you, to turn it into like that quadratic form exactly as we saw before, you, you just, you want to just factor out, um, whatever, whatever is attached to the R term inside here. So in this case, we would factor out um, a gamma over epsilon minus one, okay? Uh, of here, okay? So then we're gonna get what? Uh, rho over gamma times epsilon minus one, which is a thing we saw before, okay? Minus, one minus r. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then you can you can slightly rearrange that. So keep this stuff. Keep the one minus r. Make sure I'm not actually using my microphone. Um, keep the one minus r, and then have this be. Uh, let's see. So this would be like, you have a plus r here, so it'd be like r minus a thing. And that thing is one minus rho over gamma times epsilon minus one. Okay, so we got multiple layers of parentheses here, but so now, now we really do have it in that quadratic form, okay? It's one minus r, so the one boundary is one, and then r minus some thing. Now that thing, one minus gamma, one minus rho over gamma times epsilon minus one, backtrack a little bit, is exactly r hat, okay? So that's cool, All right? That means if we wanna write this in this, using that notation, then this is just gamma, some constant times this quadratic form with like super ugly r's, okay? One minus r and r minus r hat, okay? So, <clears throat> So that's that's cool, and that, that basically gets us back to the same situation we were in in equilibrium, except with our hat instead of our star. Okay. So, and then you know, if just to go through the logic there. Okay. Um, you know what what does that evolution look like? Okay. So then we have one here. We have let's see, some slightly larger r hat here. Okay, and then we just have what, first of all, the negative sign on our r squared term means it's a downward facing quadratic form, and then it's just kind of like, you know, something like this. This is obviously super quadratic um, with intersections at r hat and at one, okay? And then we can work through the same logic, right? So we can say, oh, well, if we start down here, R dot is negative. Okay, so remember this is, I should label my axes R and R dot. Okay, if we start down here, R dot's negative. We're gonna, we're gonna burst through feasibility. Okay, uh, if we start over here, we're gonna go up down here and go into this weird R equals one, you know, pseudo rise of the machines regime. Um, probably that's, 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 that's TVC zone right there. Okay, so um, we wanna avoid that. And the only really kind of reasonable choice then is is r hat, okay? Um, okay, so that's the same logic as an equilibrium, and that's where we get r hat. Okay, so so in the end we did all that work, and it turns out it gives us the same answer as if we just like took an integral and, and took took a first order condition, because you know it was the correct assumption that r hat is positive is sorry is constant over time. Okay, so but in general this is the safe way to do it. Okay. Generally, even if it is time-varying solution, you're going to get the right answer. 
as long as you do it carefully. Okay, so um, what is the logic for the evolution of R being different under a central planner and decentralized? So, um, so yeah, I mean, the evolution is, is the same, right? And when we, when we, uh, over here, when we did decentralized equilibrium, we had, I think, almost the, the, the constants might have been slightly different, but those are not material here. We had something r dot equals something times one minus r times r minus r star, and we had the same graph, right? So, so the that evolution or sort of like ruling out anything but that one answer is the same, okay? So, so we, we start exactly in one place and stay there forever in the social planner and the equilibrium. The only difference is that place where we start is different, it's either r star in the decentralized or r hat. R hat in uh, equilibrium and then we additionally because what we did we found that um you know our star is actually down here lower than than our hat okay that the equilibrium under invests in, in research okay um all right so i think i guess i'm out of time um okay so that's the social planner uh now okay so i just found r you can back out um different stuff from there so if we hit up the slides and yeah, there we go. Um, go to these slides, same thing here, right? You can find G, and so on and so on, okay? Um, all right, so that's 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 pretty much it. Uh, and I to take kind of a brisk pace here. So we're gonna move on to the creative destruction, the Schumpeterian model next time. Um, and there it's gonna be fixed number of products, but we're improving those products in terms of the, the productivity of, of their manufacture. Um, and that's going to be where things come from instead of more products. Okay. But that's it's going to introduce kind of a cool potential inefficiency where firms are kind of like trying to steal products from one another and they're, they're not, they, they're kind of getting a little over aggressive with that. Okay. So, um, that, but that's what's generally called a creative destruction dynamic. Okay. So, uh, we'll go through that. A lot of it is this, this, the, the mechanics, the, the, the broad layout of a solution path is, is the same. Um, the product market works a little bit differently. Okay, and we'll talk about that. Uh, but you can use very similar approaches to, to going through the model. Okay, so that's that's the plan for.